Three or four puffs of smoke there is all it takes. And sometimes I puff a little bit around here just because you never know if there's a hole underneath some of the top bars. Then we can take the roof off, puff a few puffs of smoke in there and give it a few seconds just to let it work its way around in there. And then, as and I can still see it coming out, we can lift this up. This comb is built entirely by the bees. There is no wooden frame and there's no plastic or wire um, reinforcement in the comb and it makes the comb relatively delicate. Sometimes when we want to put uh, this beehive back together for instance, we want to take this and put it right up there. Well there's a lot of bees in between the top bars and under the top bars. And if I'm just quick and smash them, that makes the bees angry. It makes the, the other bees that didn't get smashed mad at me for having killed their sisters. So I've learned to, to gently rock them and lift them a little bit from corner to corner and just gently rock and watch until all the bees get out of the way and it takes some time. When we see that there's a clump of bees beyond the last comb and that they've begun to build some brand new combs, mm -hmm. that's a clear indication that they're expanding into the empty space. Get away that hornet. Um, now, rather than let them expand on their own and potentially in a rather crooked fashion, what I might want to do here is take this last good comb that they've built, put it behind the little comb they're starting to build. This um, beard, we call it, of bees, is um, they're just hanging out. They've kind of been maybe disturbed or they're warm inside. They're making honey. And often it's an indication of a very healthy hive. The bearding has nothing to do with swarming per se. In order to look, in order to know if they're about to swarm, you need to look into the beehive, look at the brood combs, and look at the queen cell cups, and see if they're being um, polished up, and long, elongated, and if there's any larvae in them. And so to harvest it, I simply, I shake a lot of the bees off, but you can just grab a. Uh, a, a bit of vegetation, some soft grass or something, and, and brush the bees off. So now I want to catch this queen. I'll try to get her in a position where she's headed upwards. She's being pretty evasive. But I'll catch her by her wings. Now she has no choice. She, she can't sting me. I've never actually been stung by a queen. Now I'm going to put her head right in there and I'm going to slowly roll my finger and make her go in the cage. I'm going to talk to you about planting for bees. Um, one of the things that we can do as beekeepers to both increase our um, nectar flow and also um, make a more bountiful place for ourselves and our bees is to plant beautiful plants for bees. Um, one of the focuses here on our farm is medicinal herbs, and these herbs um, potentially have a good um, medicinal benefit for us, but also for the bees. In studies of ecology, we find that the more different kinds of creatures that develop relationships with each other and live in a space, the more efficiently the nutrients and the sunlight energy get um, parceled out and used by the life, the living creatures in that space. In other words, when you have bare mineral soil, there's only a certain few plants that can grow there, like tumbleweeds and cocha, a few of your, um, your colonizer plants. And then as they prepare the soil, earthworms can come in a little bit, and then other plants can grow there. When we have flowers, we can have bees.